What's going on everybody? It is Murdering back with another Raid Shadow Legends. Today we are going to be talking about a 4 key, really close to a 3 key, Ultra Nightmare team with Epics only. This is a continuation of the 2 to 1 speed ratio clan boss teams. I told you guys I was going to come up with a way, with obviously the help of Deadwood Jedi, where we didn't need to use Mashald since he was the key component in the last team that I showed you that can one key Ultra Nightmare. For this team, it's a four key simply because, in my opinion, I'm using the worst possible epics that I could think of. There's only two champions, as you probably saw from the thumbnail, being Ikatoon and Sandlash Survivor that you really need. Realistically, the only champion you need is Sandlash Survivor if you have a speed leader and a speed booster, turn meter booster, just like Hikatoon. So as long as you keep everything from Hikatoon's kit and everything from Sandlash Survivor's kit, you can replicate this team. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to go over the team, show you how to set this all up. Obviously, we have Hikatoon giving us that 19% speed in all battles i have tay rail as my attack down in my opinion he's the worst attack down to use in a team like this since he's the only champion that has two other abilities he can use besides an attack down if you've ever used tay rail even in a counter attack you know it's really frustrating when he doesn't land that attack down so you could use literally any other attack down jar egg coffin smasher sepulcher sentinel all of them only have two abilities so the frequency of them using their attack down is significantly greater than Tayrell, which is why I think he was the worst attack down and the reason why I use them in this team. Obviously, as I mentioned, I have Sandlash Survivor. I also have a Cult Brawler. Ideally, I would have done this with Frozen Banshee. She's probably the best fit for this slot. Unfortunately, I don't have a Frozen Banshee. I probably fed about 11 of them while trying to pull Kaimar and wasn't even thinking about doing this video next. So I definitely made that mistake. I highly recommend you don't use Kale because the 2.5% poisons and the inconsistency of the 5% poisons probably won't get you to that four key threshold. And also, as you can see, I do have Doom Priest here that can clear for any affinity as well as the stuns. Now, if you don't want to use this, if you want to use a health synergy to make sure the stun never goes on Hikatoon, you can absolutely do that as well. Just make sure that the person taking the stuns has the most amount of health or consider getting rid of the speed aura, just increasing the speed on everyone else using a defense based speed aura champion, kind of like what Hell Hades did from the difference of me having a Duchess leader and Hell Hades using an Alton leader to use him as a stun soaker. So that's definitely a viable option going forward. Now what I want to do is I want to show you the setup and what I need you guys to do is Focus really carefully here. This is extremely important. You do not want to mess this up. The setup for this team specifically is extremely intricate. Get a piece of paper and pencil if you need to. Open up that notepad. So let me show you really quick what you're gonna have to do. Hopefully by now I have your full attention. Now there's this button to the right of my shoulder that says auto. What you're going to do is very carefully with precision, click this button. And that is the entire setup for this team. So there we have it. This is how to set up this awesome two to one ratio team. I believe if I remember correctly at turn four is when everything fully sinks. So there you have it guys. The probably the most complex clan boss you would ever have to do was right there. I'll make sure you don't mess that up when you're trying this out. There's definitely lots of ways you can mess that up. So I can't stress how important it is to make sure you're following those exact directions when setting up this team. In all seriousness, getting back to the team, one thing that makes Sandlash really strong, if you don't know already, and I do have a video spotlighting Sandlash Survivor, her passive is kind of crazy, especially for a team like this. So what she will do is, if a player goes below a certain amount of health, she's going to put ally protection on everyone, which is going to trigger from that hit, reducing the damage they take, and it's going to put block damage on Sandlash Survivor. Now, why is that so strong? Think about Skull Crusher. Skullcrusher does the same exact thing, however he puts unkillable on himself. So he's still taking all of that damage and it's dropping him down low in health. What Sandlash Survivor has going for her is she puts a block damage, so she's literally taking zero damage on that first ally protection proc of her passive. Now another strong thing that has to do with the synergy of this comp, once that procs, if it procs in the proper timing, she's actually going to extend ally protection on everyone with her A2 
which can definitely increase the survivability of your team going forward. So that's the setup here. So as far as swapping, as mentioned before, you can use any poisoner you want. Obviously, I'm using all epics here. Pretty much any legendary you want to add that does the same role as these champions. I mean, if you have a Draco here, this is pretty much GG. You can 3-key no matter what. If you want to get rid of Doom Priest, like I said, it may be tricky at first. I'm also not using a defense up, which is severely hindering my survivability going forward. So these are all things to consider. Yes, Doom Priest is very handy because she does get rid of any affinity debuff that can be placed on, whether it's decrease speed from green, decrease accuracy from blue, or decrease attack from red. So obviously the Doom Priest is scheduled in here so she's always clearing the buffs at the start of the turn always clearing the stuns no matter what so there's pretty much once you follow the speeds i'm going to give you there's no real way for you to mess this up unless you try really really hard so what i'm going to do is i'm going to wait for this key to end i'm going to go over the recap here just so we can see what kind of consistency we're going to get then i'm going to show you a screenshot of the first time i ran this unfortunately i didn't get to test this too many times so this is just going to be the second key so i'm really looking forward to see what this team has to offer as far as consistency going forward. All right, guys, so we finished. This key was not as good as the first key I ran, but it's still a four key and in that four key threshold. So as you can see, in my opinion, these are probably the, I don't want to see worst champions, but not the most optimal champions you can run. Obviously, as mentioned before, you can run Frozen Banshee instead of a Cult Brawler. Instead of Tayrell, you can use a much more efficient and someone who pretty much benefits your team a lot more if you have Sepulcher Sentinel. I've already covered this before. Sepulcher and Sandlash Survivor's synergy is absolutely insane together. And on top of that, she also brings that defense up buff, even though it's going to be rotating. So these are very huge things to consider. I even don't have High Katoon in a Lifesteal gear set, so that could also increase my value. Going over the damage recap, we got 1.4 million from High Katoon, Doom Priest at 1.7, Tayrell at 2.7, Sandlashed at 3 million, and obviously Occult Brawler, the Poisoner, at 10.5 million damage. So this is absolutely incredible. This should pretty much skyrocket a ton of people who are using a speed team already and aren't using it efficiently. This is definitely the most efficient speed team to use since you're getting so many extra turns and it's really hard to replicate this if you didn't use the speed tuning to get even close to a four key. So that's definitely something can to consider while going forward. Now that we went over that, let's go over the speeds of the champions. First, we have Doom Priest at 174 speed and I just threw on some other stats to her. Now, one thing to keep in mind before I keep going over the gear, don't expect just to use champions like this and get a 4 key right away. You still have to hit the minimums for Ultra Nightmare, which means no one should ever be below 3.5 thousand defense. If you are, you're just not ready for Ultra Nightmare. Unless you want to use legendaries to pretty much act as a crutch and boost your performance in an Ultra Nightmare setting, don't try to take any composition, whether it's this one or another one, and say, I have those champions, I'm just going to go at it, I should be able to do it. Then get upset when you can't do it. You have to hit these defensive numbers to even consider Ultra Nightmare. The only cheese to that, like I said before, is using some OP legendary that can pretty much boost your performance enough to where you can get away with not using quality gear. So the next champion we have on our list is in fact Tayrell. He's at 228 speed. And these are the rest of his stats. Now, mastery is for everyone. I'm using the basic offense with, you can't see it because I'm in front of it, but War Master Tree and then the defense tree. If I did have deterrence on this champion, the numbers would be much higher since he would have a chance to be proccing War Master and counterattacking on every stun, which is another reason why I use Doom Priest instead of someone like Grizzle Jarl. Yes, I would have gotten a defense up buff, however. I wouldn't have gotten a chance for any of the players on my team to actually counterattack since the block debuff actually prevents any champion from receiving that stun debuff and no one will counterattack and it will not proc this mastery. So that's why I did that. But like I said, everyone's masteries are the same. So I'm going to show you this one. Consider using deterrence if you have it. And so this is the only time I'm going to show the masteries here. The next champion we have is Sandlash Survivor. So for Sandlash, he's also at 228 speed. Now, don't worry if you're saying, what about base speeds? What about this? What about that? As long as you're not taking Lore of Steel, you can copy these speeds for sure, which is another huge reason why I did choose to use the defense tree. There's no scaling you have to worry about here. 
All you have to do is match these speeds, match the offense and defense tree, and everything's going to work flawlessly. The next champion we have is Haikatoon. She is at 250 speed. This is the fastest speed you will need on your team. She has a ton of defense because she's going to be taking the stuns here. You definitely don't need to go this high on the defense. You can get away with a lot lower since usually your team's going to be wiping to the AoEs and not the stuns. I just did this as a precaution because I wasn't sure how far I was going to get. So now the last champion we have is in fact a cult brawler at 196 speed. 196 speed, I am actually below the suggested defense you want before going into Ultra Nightmare. So that was definitely a mistake on my part when looking to gear this champion. However, those are the speeds for all the champions. As mentioned before, if you did not want to use someone like Haikatoon for that speed aura, you can just add 19% base speed to the rest of your champions, increase that speed and use a defensive leader if you wanted to. The only thing your champions need is a 15% turn meter boost as well as a 30% increase speed on a three turn cooldown. So as long as you have that, you can use anyone you want in place of high katoon all right guys and that is it for my video today huge shout out to deadwood jedi thanks for working with me on this i had a ton of fun making all of these two to one comps there is another comp that i'm going to consider doing that has a use with high katoon and apothecary the problem i'm going to run into i already know it is getting enough damage without using some type of crazy legendary and one thing you can do that i didn't mention that i just remembered and i'm sorry for being so scrambled in this video is you can use a counterattack in this composition if you want to. So I highly recommend going to Deadwood Jedi's calculator, inputting the speeds that I have here, finding where your counterattack champion will fit the best, and use that, and you are already well into a three key territory. If you can add that counterattack, even if it's not covering both the AoEs, any extra damage, any extra defense up you can get, any extra ally protect you can get will be a benefit to you and your team. As always, if you enjoyed this content, do not forget to subscribe, like the video, turn on that notification bell so you don't miss my next upload. Once again, a huge shout out to Deadwood Jedi. Definitely go check out his stuff if you haven't already. And I will see you all in the next video.